Hello, everyone. My name is Shauna Hughes, and I am the product evangelist with Get Feedback. And I'm Danelle Shanker, solution engineer with Get Feedback. <laughs> Today, we're going to be talking to you a little bit about flow templates and how they're going to optimize your business process and reduce data entry errors. So let's go ahead and jump into this. So we all know that data lies at the heart of your business, and that really has a lot to do with your business process. Data influences those critical business decisions and really drives that business process. Manual data entry, as we know, really is time consuming, takes a lot of effort, and it also increases your options for error, right? People make mistakes. So when we're talking about data quality and we're talking about manual entry, we know that any slight mistake of entry error can really affect how your data is managed within your database. But data can also result in poor customer service. So that's one of the things that we all know. If you don't have all the correct information, that data is going to affect how you deal with your customers, how you streamline your business, and how you create your roadmap going forward. And actually, what we found out is 30%, 30% of your revenue is affected by bad data. So we want to make sure that that data that's being entered into your systems is accurate and as clean as possible. So how do we improve operational efficiency and reduce those errors? That's one of the questions that we need to ask ourselves. And one way that we can do that is with Get Feedback flow templates. And what flow templates allow you to do is enter data into your system as a user. So we always think about how we enter data into our system um, for your customers. We think about surveys in a generic form, but actually the flow templates surface those surveys to your users as a tool to enter data and really streamline it and make it as clean as possible. So we're going to go ahead and go through that. So that's where Get Feedback comes in, and we actually allow you to surface those types of surveys in a beautiful mobile branded, um, mobile friendly branded surveys. So you want to make sure that that survey is in context across all of your platforms and specifically for your users. So when we're talking about our users, we're talking about mobile users, we're talking about desktop users, the users are visually engaging and helps reduce that da those data entry errors, and it's more of your clicks and less data entry. So it's seamlessly integrate with Salesforce, as we all know. Those surveys, we have a connected app. It's going to manual. It's going to automatically take in that information, and then it's going to streamline that information directly into Salesforce. There's no complicated integration that you have to do with the platform. So Get Feedback Flow Templates, obviously, I'm, I'm sure some of you have seen uh, our surveys before. Um, you can get your mobile embedded surveys. However, the Flow Templates allows you to essentially take a flow, which Danelle is going to walk us through in a couple minutes here, and then allow for screen flows to capture information, again, optimizing that data entry and reducing those errors that you're going to see with that manual data entry that your users have. So in using clicks instead of keystrokes, again, reducing data entry error, which helps with your org optimization with your data. Keeps your org clean. So how do we modernize our data collection? Obviously, these flow templates is going to allow us to do that because, again, it's reducing that manual data entry and it's allowing for more clicks, more selections. You can use pictures, you can use um, icons, things of that nature to identify a specific type of data that you want to be um, inputted into your org or integrated into your org. And you can run more efficiently with this type of program and improve the quality of your data. So, it really helps you to um, have easy to use surveys so people don't want to sit there and manually enter data. Who, anyone here wants to do that on a day-to-day -day basis? You like to manually enter data? No. Well, he's a rarity. <laughs> <laughs> no one that I know of likes to manually enter data. Um, 
So most of us want something that's more automated and more user-friendly so that we're not wasting time manually entering all that data. And then with our survey logic, it actually gives you the ability to dictate how that data is being inputted into your database as well as how the user is interacting with your system as well. So it helps prompt them and walks them down that business process so it reduces the amount of information that they have to manually think through as well. The system is actually surfacing that information for them. And then you're able to improve operational efficiency. Surveys can be updated without code changing. So all you would need to do if anything changed with, your, with the questions that you need to ask or the data you want from your uh, users or your customers, all you need to do is update a single question and get feedback. And then that information is still going to flow into Salesforce in a streamlined way. And then your data is instantly captured in Salesforce. That means a lot to us all here today because when our data is instantly captured in Salesforce, that means that we're able to analyze that data right away and act on it. And that's all we want to do is action. So when we talk about customer experience and how it's affecting our bottom line, we know that real-time action really helps us save our customer relationships and improve our bottom line. Okay. Now, the next steps are automated and streamlined workflow. So if you know Salesforce, if you know the data um, architecture, you know you can streamline those workflows with Process Builder. You can streamline it with uh, workflow rules and uh, flow. And that's one of the reasons why we created our flow template is because we want to be able to have you to streamline those uh, workflow processes without having to do any type of hard coding in your database. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Danell. Thanks, Shauna. All and right. he's going to tell us how it works. Exactly right. So we're going to get into some concrete examples for everybody here in just a moment. Before we get there, let's talk about how we're going to set up a get feedback flow action on your visual flow setup. It's really simple. Basically, you'd start out going to the App Exchange and download our flow actions package. Just one point of clarification, the flow action is the actual component that you install into your Salesforce org. And the flow template is effectively an example project that shows you how to use that flow action component. Once you have that installed, um, you would go ahead and click and drag the Get Feedback component onto a screen in your visual flow. You simply plug in the survey ID that, that you built on Get Feedback prior to that. You can add variables to your flow action component, do things like inserting of metadata. What do we know about this customer to perhaps drive a skip logic pathway through that survey? Create a contextual experience that that employee that's addressing that particular business need uh, can follow through a predetermined pathway based on what we already know about that customer. Once it's all good to go, all you have to do is launch your flow just like you would normally, and it's off to the races. So let's go ahead and dive into a couple of specific examples. Um, first up, we're going to talk about lead qualification. Uh, admins in the room, how many times do you hear your sales reps complain about too many fields on your lead or your opportunity objects? Sure, it happens all the time. You're seeing a lot of hands being raised. What if you can create a single button that launches a survey and gives you the ability to just tap on some options, skip logic kind of routing you down some different pathways. And on the back end, the systems are automatically updating that lead in an appropriate way based on what we're learning about that particular prospect. We're going to show you how to automate that whole process. Next up, we're going to talk about a regional manager scenario where you have field reps that are going out into the field, speaking with local store managers, and effectively sizing up new opportunities. You know, can we sell more units? Can we uh, start selling new product lines? And be able to have that in a guided conversational format with a survey as effectively the way that you guide that conversation to the finish line and automatically populating opportunities based on what we learned through that conversation. The last one's a really fun one. This is basically taking product preferences from a customer-facing survey. In this case, it's a field rep once again, but they're there in person with their client. They hand their iPad over to their client, fill out some product preferences. We're then going to use some analytics engines, things like Einstein product recommendations, other AI and machine learning tools to say, hey, based on your preferences, we think you might like these products. Guess what? We're then going to transition at the end of that flow into a cart process. That field rep has product on, in stock. They can go ahead and swipe the credit card on the iPad, hand over their products, and move on to the next meeting. All about process efficiency. Let's get into some details here. First up, rapid lead qualification. I am a sales development rep or a business development rep. Day in and day out, I'm on that lead object. I'm trying to get people, connect with people on the phone, learn about them, and try to size up the nature of the opportunity to hand it off to an account executive. Here's what I see when I log in each morning. I'm going to go ahead and make a phone call to my prospect here, Walter Whale. 
all I have to do is click on this quick action button, and that's going to launch my qualification survey. This is going to go through all the typical qualification criteria. You know, does our solution meet their needs? Do you have authority to make this purchase? Do you have a budget allocated? What's your timeline, right? And maybe there's some skip logic pathways based on the earlier answers that size up the nature of that opportunity. So we're going to go ahead and fill out that survey. Go ahead and click Finish. It'll notice immediately, based on our business rules that are baked into the Get Feedback side, we're going to qualify that lead automatically. This all happens behind the scenes so that SDR can go ahead and move on to the next conversation without having to go and deal with a lot of manual fields. So how did we do this? This is as simple as it gets. This is actually literally the template that we bundle into our package. It's a single screen with a survey. It's that easy. All you have to do is bring in your survey token. We're using the very important record ID variable, variable tag here within the flow. Make sure you capitalize the I. Learned that the hard way a couple times. Uh, and from there, behind the scenes, all we have to do on the get feedback side, set up our conditional mapping rules. If this question is answered in this way or this combination of question is answered in a particular way, we're going to go ahead and update the status. Maybe we're even populating an opportunity automatically. Effectively offsetting the need for manual time intensive pro processes and letting the business systems take control at that point once we've gathered the information that, that needs to be collected. From there, if you decide to change your process, you can actually go back and modify your rules at any time. No code change is needed. This is what Sean was referencing. Don't need an admin in the loop once we get to the point where uh, you're at the experimentation phase and you want to ask maybe some different questions. All you have to do is come in to get feedback, update some new mapping rules all through a point and click interface. And uh, if you need to update your questions, ask some new qualification questions, we give you a PowerPoint-like interface. Very easy for non-technical users to go and update that process seamlessly behind the scenes. Zero configuration changes needed on the flow side. So very easy to manage across different stakeholders in that process. What do you guys think? Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so next up, we're going to take a look at our field rep use case. So in this scenario, I'm basically a regional manager. We have a product that we sell to retail stores. And we want to go have a conversation with that store manager. We're going to crank up the complexity level here just a little bit, and I'll show you how we're going to do that. So first of all, I'm on Salesforce One. Works great on all the mobile apps. I'm going to go ahead and launch my flow through the quick action button here in the lower corner. I'm going to choose which contact I'm speaking with. Really important to attribute this conversation to a particular counterpart at that store location so we know who to follow up with. From here, we're going to go into our embedded survey in the flow. You'll notice here it's personalized with the name of the contact that we just selected. This is all done through dynamic data merge fields. Being able to pipe that into that survey seamlessly as part of the flow. We're asking about you know, how popular is our brand compared to other brands. Is there an opportunity to stock new product lines? Is there an opportunity to sell more units? We're going to take this combination of, of uh, data that we're collecting through this conversation, and as soon as we finish that survey, we're going to once again trigger an automated process, series of conditional rules. In this case, after we go and select our, uh, our new opportunities, in this case, there's some new product lines that we're interested in, we'll go ahead and click Finish on that survey. That, that field rep can go and drive along to the next meeting. In this case, when they come back to the office the next day, they'll be able to go to their related list for this particular store location and see immediately we've actually populated two opportunities, one for some new product lines, one for some additional units of an existing product line. So you're effectively driving process efficiency in this way across any object in your Salesforce data model. You guys getting more excited at this point? Mm. Awesome. I'm hearing some woos. Oh, I love come it. I love it. On. Woo! It. Thanks, Shauna. This is my hype gal. <laughs> Um, so a little bit more going on, but not much. All we're really doing here is fetching the account details. This is going to give us all of the metadata fields that we need to pass that into the survey to create a personalized experience, including things like which product lines are currently in stock, who is it, who is it that we're speaking to, so on, so on and so forth. Um, we have a second screen here, which is basically the uh, dynamic pick list, or excuse me, the dynamic radio buttons. It's going to pull in all the contacts from that account, pick who we're having the conversation with, gather the contact details from that contact, and we're going to route that through into a survey. You can see here on the right-hand side, you know, what's the contact ID? What's the product lines that we're stocking? What's the account ID? Right? And so this all comes together, basically setting the stage with all the metadata we need to automate these downstream processes. And then from there, we're uh, basically building out a survey exactly as, as you would normally. Notice here the items in square brackets. Uh, that's basically your dynamic data. We're going to fill in the name of the, uh, the manager that we're speaking with, the location that they're at, uh, we're, we can use skip logic to basically show different product lines for that upsell question. Would you like to stock some additional product lines? Or if they're already selling everything, skip that question. Seamless. 
Uh, and then lastly here is a quick example showing how we can actually dynamically populate opportunities of different values depending on different responses that are given on that survey. So once again, our conditional mapping rules are doing the heavy lifting for all of the downst downstream administrative processes that normally are very time intensive and error prone for your in-the-field reps. All right, third use case. This is a fun one. So, so far, we've talked about a couple of very straightforward scenarios, a, a survey front and center uh, within a screen in your flow. At this point, we want to show you guys a couple of additional aspects. First of all, in this scenario, we have independent uh, contractors that are effectively field sales rep that are not employees of the company. They don't have a direct Salesforce login license. They are only a community user. That, uh, in this case, we're using the uh, example of a cosmetics brand that has their independent field reps go out and visit their clients, have conversations with leads that are routed to them, and they use a community to manage all of this. You know, leads that are assigned to them, they go and look at the record detail view in their community, and then uh, from there, all we have to do is, on the iPad for our field rep, launch a product preferences questionnaire. This is that scenario. We're going to go ahead and launch that screen flow, turn around, give the iPad to our client, and let them go ahead and have this visually engaging, compelling experience you know, do you have oily or dry skin? You know, what are your complexion features and things like that? You get some ability to um, tell us a little bit about yourself and put together effectively a data set that our product analytics engine can then chew into and figure out what are the products this person is likely to buy. Once they fill out that questionnaire, we're going to send it back into the flow. We're going to fetch a product, re uh, product recommendation, recommendations object, run that through our predictive analytics engine, and effectively present here are the products that we're going to recommend for you. Still finishing up the survey here. You can do upsells, things along those lines. Would you like to try our new Miracle Concealer, things along those lines. So here we go. Here's the transition from the, uh, the survey. We're going to hand the iPad back to the field rep and basically say, OK, we're generating some product recommendations. Can we interest you in a couple of products? Let's go ahead and select the ones that you're interested in. We're going to go ahead and build a cart. You can use any of a variety of solutions that are, uh, that are flow action enabled. Um, kind of showing that the opportunities to work with surveys together with other third-party flow actions, all in the same sequence of events. And then from there, we'll go ahead and advance through to a cart process, swipe the credit card, hand you your products, move on to the next appoint uh, appointment. What do you guys think? Yeah. It's exciting stuff, right? I'm sh did you, when you guys came here today, did you guys think about surveys uh, in this kind of light before, or is this all new stuff? All, I'm seeing a lot, of, a lot of head nodding. So that's fantastic. Um, the way we handled this particular scenario, the key element here is right in the middle. Uh, we're basically referencing an object that we create through our sync process and get feedback, and it may need to try a couple times. You know, the Salesforce API normally goes through in about a matter, matter of seconds. If there's some slowdowns, we're basically just going to retry. Hey, do we have our product preferences available yet? Once that's available, we can then funnel it through to an analytics engine and then show some additional screens to basically drive those follow-on processes with the data that we've collected from that survey in step two up above. Uh, you definitely visit us here. Um, we've got about a couple minutes left. Um, definitely, if you guys would like to learn more, we've got some folks in the back here. Definitely get your badges scanned if you haven't already. Uh, we'd love to chat with you guys about some specific use cases. I think we have time for maybe like one or two questions. What do you think, Shauna? Sure. Let's go ahead and go to the audience. What questions, questions do you guys have for us seeing all of this? Or if not, it's totally cool. Actually, before everyone up. starts leaving, if you wanted access to the deck, Amy in the back of the room there, she has some handouts that has a link, a Bitly link, that has the uh, deck available on that Bitly link. Yes. And also we have a booth downstairs um, that you can come visit us as well. We'd we'll love to chat flow yeah. actions with y'all. <laughs> All right. So, Lena, any questions? <laughs> how, how soon can you get it implemented? <laughs> Fast, real fast. <laughs> really, really, really fast. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can come talk to us or you can, I know you're already a customer, so reach out to your customer success uh, team, our customers. Or I can just come over and do That's true. That is absolutely true. Awesome. <laughs> All of these examples, by the way, were built in a matter of hours. Yeah. So we're not talking about any sort of heavy lift here. You know, once you have the plan of what needs to happen, very straightforward to go and lay that out on your, uh, on your visual flow. Yes. Awesome. Ooh. An admin yeah. can do it. You don't need a developer. Yep. Not at all. It's all yep. uh, point and click, no, point not click. code. Awesome. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs>